to you know minimize the issues right what if i told you that uh, there are a few more things that we can do to minimize a lot of uh, uh, you know unwanted things like a bug rework a lot of it right and uh, everything can be done combining what we discussed yesterday that is uh, for the coding practices along with documentation how much uh, do you all believe uh, do, do you all agree with this if not that is completely all right okay how many of you uh, agree with me like uh, you really think that uh, following the good uh, you know not the best coding practices but a decent coding practice uh, along with a decent documentation uh, resume can actually help you with a lot of things uh, it, it can cut down a lot of uh, rework a lot of uh, issues a lot of bugs uh, how many of you yeah okay good so now since you guys agree and uh, okay i don't want to begin to do things why you are not doing it uh, why not you are doing it intensively i know the reason in most of the cases but uh, before i tell you what all things we need to do i just wanted to uh, you know uh, listen from you guys what all thing you you think is required in a project uh, in terms in terms of when it comes to uh, technical documentation I, I would like to hear it from all of you one by one it's a small crowd so yeah, we have that liberty Oops. and i'm not going to call names may i yeah please go ahead so uh, first of all there are many kind of many types of documentation that mm -hmm. uh, we, we can follow mm -hmm. right we can follow simple uh, google docs uh, sleep maintenance also we can follow uh, some uml documentation which we have never did yet also we can follow right like uh, uh, you can see DFD, RT diagram, flowchart, uh, data flow of the diagram. Also, uh, we can follow RCA document as well. Like if there is any, uh, after the sprint planning, at the time of retrospective or before the retrospective call, you can, anal you can draw RCA for some, uh, if there is any issue negative for Okay, let's do one thing. So, oh, sorry, sorry to interrupt person. Let's do one thing. Uh, why don't you guys put in the chat what all the you think is required in a project? All of you. Okay. Yeah, that's when I passed, I guess. Just put the document name or the document type, whatever. Nothing is wrong or right, okay? So don't worry. RC, ERD, okay. Anything else? Uh, Google Sheet and Docs are basically the format, right? The, where you want to have the document. Yes. What all document you want to have? Uh, anyone add to them? Flowchart. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Action of work. Okay. Good. Visualization data. Okay. Good. Cool. Now, uh, Again, they are tools, uh, W, Power BI. So uh, we'll not discuss tools over here, right? So if you discuss, yes, uh, you know, uh, everything in detail, this session will take a week, not an uh, hour. Right? So we can, again, we, uh, I'll send you the document. You can uh, read it. You can, you know, uh, ask queries in the group. You can discuss it, you find it out. But uh, we can discuss everything in just one hour, in 90 minutes. Right? So uh, fine. Whatever you have, guys have said is right. Okay. But uh, again, how many of you are not aware of SDSD? How many of you are not aware of SDSD? I think all of us, right? Sorry, so, what's the term? SDLP, Software Development Lifecycle. Can somebody explain SDLC? Anyone, please? Requirement gathering, mm -hmm. then uh, uh, planning, mm -hmm. then implementation then forwarding it for testing then if any rework comes back then fixing those and then completing the cycle and then maintenance delivery yeah maintenance yeah right okay let's see. right so uh 
what do guys think when you should have you know when you, when you talk about documentation where do you place it in which stage requirement gathering stage okay first stage of sdlc first stage of sdlc okay anyone else then we can uh, add more in a uh, second stage as well like in analysis space okay uh, and in in every test stage i think for a third stage like design we can uh, draw some design pattern over there uh, or dft rft mm -hmm. uh, in fourth stage implementation stage mm -hmm. so flowchart in the fourth stage and the fifth stage like maintenance or like that we can use rca as well so data visualization as well on that stage right so i think in every stage we can maintain uh, different different documentation for each and every stage perfect perfect right so that is the answer i was expecting right so uh when people think about documentation they think okay we got a project we'll first design the hld then the lld uh and then we'll write some test cases and we are done we are good but uh if you see practically this doesn't work right because you see uh you design most of us work in agile right and we design one component we upload that we test it we fix it and then uh we have uh, we got a you know change request kind of thing and then we work on one more functionality then we have work, uh, we have to work on multiple streams so every time you work you want the document to be updated so they're basically uh, broadly, if I uh, for to today's scope, I would say we we'll discuss only two kinds of document. Okay, one is HLD and one is LLD. Okay, so when I say HLD, it's basically a high level design document, and LLD is low level. Uh, again, there are a lot of uh, other things like the uh, DLD and uh, things like that, but we'll uh, not uh, discuss those things. This is not uh, you know uh, required as of now. We we'll broadly focus on HLD and LLD plus input uh, inline documentation so and of, of course if you don't but uh, broadly we focus on actually so guys uh do any of us uh don't know what is an hld or high level design okay so all of us know what is actually so uh i would like someone to explain what what is HLD. Aru, would you like to go? Anyone, please. Hello. Uh, okay. Yeah, Aru, please go on. Yeah. Uh, high level. Uh, my... Um, it means uh, just a uh, uh, design of architecture, architectural design. Okay. And what else you How right. the uh, system, system, want system architecture uh, yes. Okay. So it's basically you are uh, saying it's a broad level design, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. And what is the NA? Not the yeah. What is the LLD? Design? Low level design. Uh, the entity relationships. Mm -hmm. No, we will come to the component. We will come to the components. But uh, what is the purpose, right? Why do you have an uh, HLD and then you have an LLD? Uh, it actually um, uh, uh, shows the clear scenario uh, over on the projects and uh, its relationships. I will do for uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get you. Can you please come uh, actually, actually, it will, it, will, uh, it will have a clear picture of the total entire system how uh this, this how this will work and how these are related uh you're talking about hld or lld yeah actually hld hld will provide us the architecture how the how mm -hmm. the architecture is and the low level designs will just go through the entities and etc how these are relation related with interrelated with each other each entities okay 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 uh fair enough it's not only entity by the way uh yeah. Anyone else would like to explain what all thing you think you think? Okay, there is again nothing wrong or right. The, yeah, you know, uh, yeah. HLD uh, means I think as uh, it will give some example. Then in your project there are maybe some blocks. Like in your project there is block module, like there is any product module. 
So each module we can treat as a uh, HLB diagram uh, and uh, denote it in the HLB diagram. Right. And the LLD means deeper level, like right. for each model, how this model is treated by itself. Means in blogger, there is how many things over there, any category, any subcategory like this, any how there is a relationship over there as it all said. So okay. deep, deep level architecture is, uh, so is basically low level uh, diagram. And high level means uh, the only the module like blogger, product. Suppose there is user module. So those are the uh, different different blocks of uh, sub uh, block of modules which contains in entire project. So that should be the as high level diagram. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Now, uh, okay. Let's uh, you know uh, take a step back. Okay. Now uh, all of you guys are. Senior people, right? Does uh, CL3, CL4, uh, and uh, uh, you work with people who are from CL7 as well, right? The freshers. Now, what is the difference between a uh, uh, fresher and on uh, an applicant for that matter? What is the difference? Experience, mm -hmm. right? Um, Ex with this is I'm making uh, power cap cap capability. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, like I said, experience and with experience comes exposure, right? Yeah, right. Problem so, uh, solving ability, right? Right. So, uh, imagine a situation, okay? There is a requirement you want to build, uh, let's say, for example, a secured login system. I mean, secured is the uh, default thing. You want to have a, a login uh, page, very simple. Now, if I ask you guys to code it. And if I ask a fresher to put the same piece of code, there will be difference, right? You will have, while you are coding, you will have a lot of security checks and blah, 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 thing. But if I ask you, to, you know, a fresher to do it, chances are there that person can just send the login request in a get, uh, you know, method. Possible, hai. they can have it. Right. Unless until, uh, you know, he knows that. They have to use those or something, and this is just one of the examples, a simplest example. Like uh, you can find a lot of examples. Like you can, uh, you know, look at your code or uh, your projects, and you can see the difference. The way uh, someone with uh, an uh, expert person codes, and uh, the way a fresher codes. There's nothing wrong. Uh, you know, uh, it's not the fresher's fault. Just because that person doesn't have the exposure, he or she cannot think that way. The way a senior person can think. Right now, uh, imagine a situation. All the thinking things are done by, by the leads and the architects, and the developer. They just need to execute. They don't need to think. Right? Will it be use useful? Yeah, person. Yes, yeah. that should be the flow. Sorry, that should be the flow to follow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that, that's okay. Uh, but uh, just imagine a situation no? where you design the document, you give an algorithm to the developer, to the fresher, and this fresher, this kid, he or she doesn't need to think anything. He knows, he or she knows what exactly need to be done. He just translates that algorithm. A piece of code will it reduce a lot of rework, a lot of uh, bugs, uh, easy maintenance, right? So, how you achieve this? Obviously, you cannot write algorithm for the entire question. What is the next best thing that you can do? You can write documentation uh, or uh, write, write any flow, write the flow, how to treat. Uh, basically, in our project, we, uh, this simplest story is you uh, documentation is one part. Then, then also you can just create the ticket by yourself and assign distribute the same to the developers. Let, let, let's get get into the project management thing right now. Okay, so that's that's a completely different story altogether. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So this is. Or if you think something. No. Okay. Now. Uh, now understand uh, okay let's imagine one more situation okay and now it happens in uh, most of the project 
you design something, you develop something, and the client says, okay, no, uh, we wanted it this way, or this can be you know done in a better way. It happens, right? What if the client doesn't have a chance to say that no, this is not something uh, he approved. He has he or she has to accept the release if he or she wants something else they should go for a change management system they should uh, raise a cr will that help will that solve a lot of reworking right say something i'm audible guys i'm just wondering because no one is morning. I may check to respond here. Okay. Okay. I haven't seen that. Okay. Now, uh, how many times it happens that uh, you have written a piece of code and uh, the QA guy says, okay, no, this is not the way it should be. And uh, you fight with the QA person and you say, no, 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 this is how it should be. Or uh, this is not in the scope, the requirement that you're talking about. And this QA person says, no, no, it should be done this way. Does it happen? Yes. Right. Now, how to avoid all these things? The simple solution is documentation. And when I say documentation, yes. there are two ways to do it, right? Uh, the easiest way uh, for me is to, you know, uh, put that in your KRA. Okay, you have to get the documentation and uh, we'll do it. Okay, and I'll get it done. But that's of no use. That's of no use because uh, if you're not doing it the right way, Okay, and if you're doing it for, just for the sake of doing it, okay, and if you don't understand the reason you are doing it, you will you now uh, create a document which is of no use, and that is the reason we're having this session. How to do it that you can study, I'll forward the materials. Etc. Right. Now, let's come to the documentation part. So, like I said, we'll have two document, uh, uh two documents of, as of now for today's session one is the HLD, one is the LLD. So, I'll quickly walk you through the document. Okay. I'll not go deep into it because uh, we have limited time. Now, if you see this thing, okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. So basically, this is the uh, architecture guideline document. Uh, this is basically the HLD only. It, uh, there is not much difference, so you can use the same template for HLD. Now, let's uh, I, I'll skip this thing. Okay forward context uh, which you can do. Now the first thing comes the functional view. Right? Now uh again let me stop the screen here and let me ask you this thing. What do you mean by the functional requirement and what do you mean by the technical requirement? What is the difference? And why they are important uh, why it is important to document both the things. Kind of, uh... yeah, functional means uh, what is the requirement uh, the client asks for and uh, the technical documentation means it's part of the developers how they will implement it at what is the requirement at what the processes they will follow okay okay uh javed would like to add something um... Yeah, I think uh, functional means uh, what client is expecting, the same what Arup has said. Right. And technical is like for uh, developers to understand what procedure we will, we will be following. Right, right, right. So the first thing that you want to mention is that, let me share that again. The functional view. Now, like I said, uh, your documents can help you save time, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to both the client protection and the you know development point of view. So this document is basically help you to you know uh, tell the client, okay, you know what this is what we are expecting. Uh, not just the client, all the business stakeholders, like you like your PM, the PDs, right, the BAs, they can refer to this document. They can look, okay, this is what we are going to build. Okay, so that is exactly what you want to put in the functional view. Here? Any queries? No? 
Then comes the process. Okay. Simple. We just to you know uh, need to mention what all things need to be done, how things are going to do, uh, be there. Right. Then, like we said, technical. We are going to write the non-functional thing, like uh, what all thing will be there, uh, you know, which will support the functional uh, requirement. Okay, can somebody? I think somebody is not on mute. I guess. Yeah. So, in case of the non-functional view, we are going to put those things which will work in the packet, okay? which will help the functional to achieve the functional requirements. Right. Now. This is something really important. Okay. Now, a lot of time uh, people complain, okay, you know what? Uh, I don't have time to do this, or this is not in the scope, uh, I don't have the resources. You know, uh, let, let, I, I don't need to explain all those things. You all know what all things is when you have the flow. We want to put all the constant over there. Right. Principle, I, I'll skip for now. You can just uh, read the logical view of the interesting. Now, this is something I wanted to do. What are things will be there in the application, the entire application, right? And how they will talk to each other. This is called the integration. Okay. Clear so far? Any queries? Yeah, we are going to prepare this document. Okay. So if you have any query, please ask. Okay. Now, uh, design view, intra view, uh, those are, you know, self explanatory I don't need to discuss all these things. Now we'll go directly to the security view. Okay. Now, uh, we discussed this yesterday as well, right? What is the most important part of project? security? Okay. And uh, what all things you are going to implement over there? Okay. Uh, how many of you know about uh, PII? Anyone? Sorry, what is that? PII. Yeah, personal information. Yeah, like GDPR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, can you please explain that? Yeah. Can you please explain that, Javed? Yeah, personal information like uh, don't uh, like uh, we need to encrypt the uh, phone numbers, email ID, name. Yeah, so basically all uh, personal uh, related information like that. Yeah, it's not you don't want to disclose uh, the user data. Yeah, to anyone who doesn't have the authority. Authority. Right. Even while storing in database, also we need to encrypt and store. Right. Uh, the same goes with uh, you know uh, the basic security uh, features like. Uh, uh, login, uh, you know, whenever you are uh, passing some sensitive data, they should be, uh, let's say, we can be using uh, other related data somewhere. You want to make it secure. So, all those things you want to mention in the security thing. Right. One more. Okay. And the rest of the things that are uh, self assured you can just read and you can implement that. Now comes the now comes something which is actually required for the developer for the okay. That is the LLE. And we'll focus more on the LLE today. Right. Now uh let me ask you this thing. We discussed that uh, uh documentation is a process that we need to follow at every stage. Right? So when do you think? You're going to write an LLE. All the phase, uh, all the phases or at the beginning at the maintenance. When do you start writing an LLE and uh when will you stop writing the LLE? Uh, after final planning, LLD, you mean, right? Low yep. level design. Yep, yep, yep. Like, yeah, after like uh, final planning, like after having high level design, then we will break into small, small modules. Right. right. So basically, you start the LLD based on the HLD. Once the HLD is ready, approved, you start LLD. And when you stop writing the LLD, 
when you think okay now the LLD is done we don't need to add anything I think after the approval of client. Okay. Okay. Uh, Apiksha, what do you think? Nikita, any thoughts? No. Okay. Um, Prosenjit? Come on. No. No. Nothing. Nothing coming in my mind. Right now. Okay. How many of you think uh, we should stop writing the LLD at some point of time, or how many of, or do you think uh, it's gonna be a live document? That. Uh, this isn't the option. It's a live document. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Why? Because uh, maybe after approval of client, maybe some pro problem occur, or maybe some requirement occur. There is. Uh, and, uh, there is uh, no if the project is not aged yet, uh, so there is many type of case type. As I said in uh, uh, HND, uh, in HDLC there is maintenance phase as well. So uh, HDLC so main, in the maintenance phase maybe that part also jump back in future as well. So live the live updation is I think uh, good practice for this. Because we may, may need to require the uh, require to update the LLD in future for in maintaining phase as well. Right. Okay. So now since we know it's a live document, let's go into that. And I really want to discuss this thing. Because this is the need of the R. Oh. Okay. Again, I'll not go uh, into everything. I'll just give you overall thing. And I'll share this document with you. You can go through. So, uh, like the, you see, uh, you know, the purpose, scope, system overview, uh, then constraint, all those things. Uh, then, uh, what's this thing? Let me directly jump into this. So, basically, all these things you can get from the HLD. You just need to, uh, you know, uh, put a link to HLD and uh, make it over there. Okay. Now we we'll start from here. Okay. Application activity. Now let's say, for example, okay, you have 10 modules in your application. You want to have, like we discussed, right? Uh, when you want to give this uh, project to all uh, pressure, you want, you, you don't want uh, the pressure to think anything. He or she should have everything available. He or she just needs to translate the document into code. Right? That is something is done at this point right? in the application architecture. If you see it uh, on the left side, you can see uh, the 2.4.1 is option as a module, the first module. Then you have the, the screen, the wireframe, the fields, the logic, everything. Right? So, first thing you want to do is you want to explain something about the architecture I and mean, uh, the application in a uh, brief. Because everything is already there in the HLD, you don't want to write everything again over here. But uh, yeah, you want to give a brief. The main things come over here in the LLD. Okay. The first module. Okay. Let's say, for example, authentication in this case. Okay. Over here, you want to mention everything that needs to be done. Okay. So basically, this is uh, you can consider as an algorithm. Not the proper algorithm, or where you have the if else condition, but you want to explain the logic in, in a detailed manner, right? Any any doubt, any queries? Because this is really important. No, guys, many colleagues when people don't ask me queries, I'm a bit scared. Okay, fine. Now let's say, for example, in that particular module, we have multiple screens. We want to add every screen under that module. In this case, let's say, for example, login to the first screen, right? So you want to add the login screen. So uh, if you have already the screen, you can just put the screen or you can just put the wireframe. Then you want to actually put all the fields and the validation. 
how will you get over? Now I want you to, want to ask the question to you guys. Now you have seen that okay, you have uh, the fields validation. The fields you can get from Wildcat, but how you get the validation? Are you going to write it by yourself? Will ask someone, or you get it from someone? Will Google it? How will you get the validation? Um, basic uh, like validation, we can see the screen and we can think and write mm -hmm. what should be validated, what data should be validated. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Okay, let me put it this way. Who are the stakeholders? Of a project while it's in the development phase. Product owner. Sorry. Product owner. Product owner. Okay. And uh, architect, technical architect. Right. And, and project manager. Right. BBM. Uh huh. And a uh, team leads, uh, team leader also. Okay, right. We are missing one. You no, know, all, all of them. Developer all of them. as well. Developer, right? And we are missing one. You know, important person over here. QA. Sorry. QA. QA. Right. So while writing the uh, validation and the business rules, you want to be in sync with the QA. Okay. Otherwise, what will happen? You write some validation. Q has some different uh, validation list in her or his uh, test cases, and uh, the conflict will arise when it will go to this. Right. So while preparing this thing, make sure you are in sync with the test, testing. Okay. Apart from that, uh, you want to add uh, some business tools. You can also add this in this table. So uh, with validation, you can have one more column, and you can say business tools. If also, you can ask BA as well. Like business analyst. You can ask BA. You can ask BA. Obviously, this document you want to share with all the stakeholders. But while preparing it, you want just particular this section. Okay. You want to be in sync with the test. Okay. And again, okay, uh, if there is some query or issue, you can obviously loop in the BA. You can obviously loop in, loop in the PM and everyone, or even the client. But uh, yeah, you have to work closely with the QA while preparing this particular section. This particular table. I hope I'm clear, and I hope you understand why I'm saying this. Right. I have one question. Yeah, right. Do we need to uh, keep wireframe ready before making this uh, documentation? Yeah. Or it could be like a sketch or something. Yeah, yeah. No sketch things. is fine. So, so uh, if you, if you see this screen, no, it's not a proper uh, UI, right? It's just a wireframe. Uh, it can be a sketch. It can be uh, you know uh, on a uh, PSD uh, I mean, the image. Right? Mm -hmm. But all the fields should be there. Okay. Uh, over here, the UI doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, the positioning uh, doesn't matter in this case, or, or the uh, color, the actual component that you are going to use, they don't matter. But yeah, you have the command, the controls, the fields. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, how you design it? So you can do it, but the thing is, after you do uh, something and the design comes, which is a bit different. Let's say, for example, you have uh, there's a situation where you have used check boxes, okay? And the design comes as a you know, uh, let's say, for example, uh, multi select uh, drop down or select box, whatever, whatever you call it. Everything will go for it all, right? So, you don't want to take such kind of risk. So, you want to finalize the, uh, the control element before you write this document. I hope I answered it very well. Yeah. yeah. And likewise, you have to write uh, this section 4. Point, sorry, 2.4.1, 0. 0.1, 0. 0.2, 0. 0.3, whatever, for all the modules. So every module will have this all the sections. The detail, what all things need to be done. The screen, the value. At least these things should be there. Right? 
Next comes the DBT type. Like you guys uh, wish this, like your uh, VR diagram. Now, uh, again, it's a no brainer, but uh, I'll still ask you how you design the VR diagram. Okay, nothing is wrong or right. Okay. Please share. What do you think? Hello. Yeah, so first, we, yeah, or, <laughs> so actually first uh, we will define the entities and its properties and uh, after confirm after confirming the entity and its properties, then we can uh, go for the air diagram of okay. each and every entities. Okay. And how do you uh, decide what all entity will be there? Yeah, it, it, it will come from uh, the, of, of course, the functional documentations and uh, then uh, the uh, screens available just so that we can get the attributes uh, for, and the fields available there. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Javed, do you think something? Yeah, through database, uh, in some database, I forgot the name, uh, there is a tool. Through that also, we can make the entity relationship diagram. Like it gives you the proper exact uh, relationship. Many. Uh, I'm, I'm not talking about the tools, right? Uh, tools, uh, that's a different story. You can use any tool for that matter. Uh, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. Uh, right. But it's the thing like, what all, how you will actually design uh, this thing? How, how you get to know that, okay, these uh, all tables will be there, the other views, uh, the procedures will be there. Uh, this table will have uh, these, these, these <coughs> uh, fields and uh, the other keys will have. Right, mm -hmm. we have to decide all this thing before you design the database, right? Yeah. Or if you design the uh, ER diagram, so how will how will you get to know that? Okay, these are the things we should be there. Or these are the requirement of the. That is my question. Because these are the basics. Okay, if you uh, mess up over there, you will have to do a lot of rework. So that, that's the reason I want to spend some time on this particular uh, uh, section. So, Panchuma, uh, first we have to check the SOW based on the based on the line item that is defined there. We have to do the analysis on that, and if that means analysis, that means we have to check the technical architect part and uh, need to do analysis based on those line item. And if I find that we have to uh, do, uh, we have to create a new DB. Uh, we have to. Uh, Probably on that on that case we have to do that ER diagram based on the based on the requirements, mm -hmm. and if we think uh, or we see that we need to change a particular field or need to add some fields in the existing table, then also we have to do the proper ER diagram in in in, in that case as well. So these okay. are the two approach that I can see. Okay, okay, this is not wrong. This is not wrong, but the. Uh, uh, Okay, you might have heard this, right? A picture worth thousand words, right? Now, uh, your SOW or your HLD will have a lot of things, and uh, okay, so what could be a better way to, you know, or easier way to get into this diagram or design this diagram or, or decide the fields that you want to have in your database? Again, there is no right or wrong answer. So, I'll share what I believe. You guys are free to share what you believe, and I urge all of you to share what you think would be the easier, way, the easiest way to decide what all thing will be there in the air diagram or in the database. Forget the air diagram. Let's talk about the database. Come on. And guys, don't be afraid, okay? There's nothing right or wrong. Okay, let me put it this way. Okay. You want to design the database. Okay. How we will design the database? Obviously, like you said, you will uh read the SL will you will uh read the SOW. And everything but according to the design, it's right. I'm not denying that. But is there an easier way to do it?
pass with to segmented the module so yeah. each uh, the second step uh, in for each module need to segment uh, some sub sub module in, the, in that module like uh, is there any uh, main say so like for each and every module there should be one table and then if there is any relation no 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 uh that that's not the required right uh you cannot have you know it you don't need to have one table per module that's not uh no mandatory thing it depends on the requirement yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. so we cannot yes. have that uh, that as a thumb rule but i think if we use uh, the uh, independent uh, table then it would be easier to reuse the module in any other places uh, we can build it like component this module we can treat this module as a component mm, not, not 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 necessary not necessary okay. it depends it depends Yes, it's right. keep it. It depends. It depends on the product. Uh, yes, uh, it has all pros and cons, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not a thumb rule that you can use. Uh, if you're using this thumb rule, I would say think again. There are a lot of uh, drawbacks as well. Anyways, uh, coming back to the topic, and I actually want all of you to share this thing, right? So, uh, what could be one of the easier way to design this? Here diagram without you know instead of just uh, reading the entire uh, SOW and uh, HLD. Okay, let me give you a hint. What I believe. Okay. It's not a document. It's a diagram that you can place in the HLD. You can. The no, UI presentations. UI presentation. I mean the UI design, which uh, we presented uh, in the. I mean, to, what what you got confirmed from the clients, or uh, the stakeholders. Okay. Okay. You can get a uh, overview there. Just uh, such as the login, uh, login part and uh, the user interface part. In this way, we can get it uh, hints uh, how many, what are the entities and its properties, and we can. Okay, okay, fair enough. Javed, what do you think? Mm, no idea right now. Okay, fair enough. Mm, normally, like uh, on high level design or low level design, uh, we can just simply uh, make a sketch of uh, forms, and based on that, we can uh, design this ER diagram. And of course, there will be a changes in future when we actually start implementing. Because at right. beginning, while designing, there can't be a perfect ER diagram. Right. Oh no! See, there is nothing perfect, right? Yeah. Uh, I always say joke. Mark down. People say that I am the, uh, you know, Mr. Perfect. But uh, we have seen Mangal Pandey. We have seen Thug of Hindustan. So nothing is perfect. <laughs> so, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, we can avoid a lot of rework. That mm -hmm. is for sure. Right? So, uh. Okay, let let's put it this way. Because any application for that matter is designed for the user, right? Somebody is going to use that application. That's why you're designing it, you're developing it, right? Now this is a cube. If you know what all thing this user is going to do. It's going to be easier for you to design the database, irrespective of the screens that they have. Right? Guys, you agree? You don't agree? Say something, please. Yeah, I agree. Okay, good. So, uh, how many of you are aware of uh, uh, something called. Sorry, uh, sorry also, yeah. can you please repeat your last statement again? Okay, I was saying if you're designing an application or developing an application, any application for the matter, you are designing these things or developing these things for a user or a set Correct. of users or multiple users, Correct. right? Correct. Correct. So if, if you know what exactly these people are going to do with this application, mm -hmm. okay, what are the touch points, what are the fields they need to access, what are the fields they need to save, store, right? Then so, it's gonna uh, be yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What? So in that case, Ansu, so combining all the things like like the SOW or what 
uh, Arup has suggested that means if we have the screencast or uh, some screen design based on all this combining effort, we can uh, we can we can draw our PR diagram based on that because in that case that the requirement is quite uh, visible for us. We can understand and based on that we can uh, create our ER, ER diagram. Uh, even uh, Arup, sorry, Arup, Prasun uh, said a similar thing that right? uh, you want to bind the database with the module. Now you are saying you are binding the database with the UI. Uh, in my opinion, mm -hmm. this is not the best thing that you should do. Unless until you have a, 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 a valid reason behind that or, or significant reason behind that. You don't want to mm -hmm. bind the database with the front end. Tomorrow mm -hmm. the front end may change, tomorrow the flow may change. But the data will remain there, right? Okay. So you want to design database based on the action the user is going to take. Yeah, got it. All right. And obviously, yeah. even you want to design the uh, screen on that, uh, uh, you know, basic only. But uh, still, you don't want to bind the screen with the database. But uh, binding, I'm not talking about uh, the technical thing. But uh, yeah, not sticky like, okay, this if this uh, uh, screen has 10 fields, uh, this table will have 10 fields and they'll, this will attract, uh, at, uh, no, attached to this particular screen. No, we don't want that. So, how many of you are aware of something called uh, use case diagram? Yes, I just write down that in the chat. Sorry? I I mention it in the chat. I can't see your chat. Achha, achha. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, I just saw it. Yeah, use case diagram. Uh, so, person, uh, can you explain how it works? Use case diagram. Use case diagram, we can uh, use UML for that. Uh, we can use UML uh, protocol to uh, write down a use case diagram. It is actually more or less like uh, differences the field name. DFD is basically database related diagram, but use case diagram is basically what use. You, is it, it is based on the user terms, like login, like after that, uh, the screen of listing page, like uh, over there, some another button, so edit, delete. So use case means what you see in this, in the UI or what user face. So it is uh, depend on, uh, use based on user perspective, not any database related, like the database perspective. It is depend on user perspective how the uh, project or the page is created so that's the thing okay i'm not wrong so basically uh, uh right what you said is i just want to uh, refine it a bit if i can so basically in the use case diagram uh, you have only one uh, intention that is you want to know what all users are there and you want to know what all action these users will take okay let's say for example you have two users okay one is uh, a faculty and one is a student and there are modules which will be overlap there are modules which will be you know uh strictly bound with the particular user the action not module but action right you want to just mention everything like okay this user can do all these functions and this user can uh, do all this method i mean all, all these actions right if you have clarity on that based on that you want to create the database so that will help you you know uh, your database to be you know independent of the modules Element of the screen, and uh, tomorrow, if uh, something changes in the screen, or you know, uh, you want to divide a module into multiple modules for the pattern, or you want to add something else in a module, you don't, you don't want to you know disturb the database. You want to just you can just create one more uh, table or view for that matter, and you can use that. No, not view, but table. So uh, I want you to look at the use case diagram while creating the DFS. In my opinion, that is the easiest thing to do. Right? Now, the second thing, while creating the uh, uh, ear diagram, right? Apart from now, you know, okay, uh, these are the fields, these are the database that uh, uh, they are the tables, uh, they are the views you want to have in the database, right? Apart from that, what all thing you want to you know uh, keep in mind while designing the database, while designing the ear diagram? Other design, forget the diagram, what is the database? Now you know what are things the user is going to do. Next one.
Kaushik, what do you think? Uh, sorry, on Suman, <laughs> I was distracted by your chats. Okay. I have not heard your question. Sorry. Now you know what all action this user is going to take. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So you know uh, what all fields will be there in your database. When what all tables will be there in your database. Okay. At, at a broader broader level. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Now this is not enough to create the database. Okay. You know what all things will be there. But mm -hmm. again, uh, if you're talking about uh, something like MySQL, mm -hmm. which has the relationship thing, right? Uh, uh. You also need to understand, okay, uh, these fields I can group in this table, these fields you can group in this table. Uh, we can have uh, these fields from these two tables in a view. Uh, okay, uh, this, this is one, this particular report. If I want to pull this report, I have to uh, write 10 queries. So instead of 10 queries, I'll just uh, create a SP and I'll call that SP and you want to place that SP in the uh, database, right? Mm -hmm. You have to keep all these things in mind. Good. Right? So that Good. is the second, second step. Once you have clarity on all these things, you can easily create them. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we are right now. Correct. And before that, we have to do the uh, relationship model, right? We have to check the relationship model before doing yeah. the ERT, ERT yeah. diagram. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So after use case diagram, I think we need to do data flow diagram. Then we need to do ERT diagram. Yeah. If you can do the DFT, nothing like it. Nothing like. It. But uh, if you don't, okay. No, do the DFT. That's the right. Thing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first one. Yeah. After the use case diagram, uh, do the DFT, and then uh, you get more clarity, and then you can go with the uh, ERT diagram. Good. Now one thing. Uh, now this is a very uh, common thing that uh, I have seen. What are thing uh, we'll keep in mind while uh, when it comes to naming convention in the database? How do you uh, know? Look, just okay. Let's have a look at the icon that we have in hand. Yeah, I follow camel case. Uh... The first letter start with lower case, then uh, the camel case. Uh, yeah, same, I, same camel case. Okay. Camel, camel case for, for what? Yeah, for uh, a entity name for table name. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many of you think the diagram that you see over here is a good diagram? Uh, so uh, for the relationship table, there is underscore over this table. Here. So the rest of the things I think is fine. <laughs> Obviously, all the things is fine, but I think there is one catch that underscore is over there for relationship. Yeah, okay. Tell me one thing. If you design, uh, you know, if you have a database, what are things you have in the database? You have a table. You have views. Yes, SPs broadly, right? Yes. Just putting the design. Is there a way you can know? Okay, this is a SP. This is a view. This is a table. Is there a way? Could you share this? Can you put a session on your? Yeah. And so, sorry, I have to leave to join another call. Can I leave? Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, so sorry, actually, there's one pre sales call that I need to join. Sure, uh, in that case, uh, if you're uh, dropping off, that's okay, but make sure, uh, take it. That's okay, that's okay. We'll okay. okay. Thanks, Anshu. Thanks. So, my question is again, I'm repeating the question. Uh, just look at the ER diagram. Is there a way you can know, okay, this is a view, this is a table, this is a SP? Is there a way? Or, oh, okay. One step back. Okay. Do you think it's uh, really important to know what is uh, which one is a SP, which one is a table, and which one is a view by just looking at the diagram? Is it actually required? Agar zaruri hai to baat karenge. Agar zaruri nahi hai, we'll skip it. No, uh, you can continue with this. It's not important. Okay. It's important. It's important. Achha, it's important. Okay. Yes. Javed, what do you think? You can do it. Yeah, 
you should know which is stable and which is view right so uh if we think that uh if this is really required so that you know uh, you can just have a look at the ear diagram and you know uh what all the what are views you have what all the you have so that uh you don't wind you know end up uh, fixing the view in your code uh and uh, thinking that it's a table right so uh how do you know that this is a view uh this is a table how will you identify just look at the diagram is there a way there should be some naming convention for views yeah and there is a fix when you add views yeah. yeah so that is my question when i uh, ask called naming convention make sure you use appropriate prefix before the table or view or HTML. So, for example, if it's a table, start with uh, something like TBL of or is is a view. Start with B, or is a temp table. Start with temp, right? And these things can uh, vary from project to project. That's uh, completely all right. SP but for whatever can SP, right? Sorry, SP. for SP for function. Yeah, so, so that's, that's, what, that's, that's what I'm telling you. Uh, these things can vary from project to project. That's not a big deal. Okay, you can have your own naming convention. The standards are basically TBL, ASP, and view, but uh, and, uh, but you can use your convention. That there is nothing wrong with that. But make sure you put everything in this element in the naming convention part on the top. Okay. So if something start with TBL for that for the matter, it is a table, not a view. And if we something start with a V underscore, that's a view, not a table. Right. So that people don't get confused. I mean, you don't get confused. Any queries so far? No. No. Okay. Now there are two situations that can happen when uh, design. Uh, in some projects, you might be designing it by yourself. In some cases, the DPA might be designed. Right. Uh, I just uh, this is a question for Javed. This way, Javed. Uh, uh, how many projects you work with? Uh, worked on so far? Sorry, come again. How many projects you worked on so far in your human? Project. Uh, only one. Okay. Okay. Uh, first one. Uh, one product and. Uh, do Do you have anyone who have worked on both product and project? I I I. Okay. Uh, right. So uh, how many times you have uh seen the developers design database and how many times you have seen the TPS design database? Yes, for Pearson project, uh, there is one assigned DBA for that. But uh, I think most of the time, developer design database in our projects, as which project I have worked on, like the LSBR project, like uh, what Pearson project, like uh, Macrovin project, or you can see even say for product. I think for product also, uh, developer uh, did. Uh, because in product, I think for what product there is no space in this uh, in that stage. Yeah, I, I am talking about six years earlier. So that time I think in okay. that. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Data. Maybe we do not do uh, a six year time. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so okay, okay. So I'll, I'll just come to your point. Okay. So in that case, you know, uh, if uh, the DBA team is involved, make sure you are in sync with the DBA team. No matter who designs the year diagram, uh, it's you. Or uh, some of the DBA team, make sure you are in sync with the uh, DBA team if uh, the DBA team is involved. And that's an opinion, but I still thought of uh, you know, adding it because I have seen an issue. Uh, I, I have seen a lot of issue where uh, such kind of things are said. Okay, after that, the DBA team will go to the So, okay, next question. We have something else to discuss. So the sometime yeah. what happened, uh, as I see that, uh, uh, as I uh, said that for Pearson project we had DBA that time, but uh, most of the time we, uh, as I said, uh, we need to sync always with them. But most of the time we uh, we we are uh, we are done with this database. We just do our code with the database. So if there is any complexity like related to uh sp is complex sp uh so that time we only reach with the db db person so that's the problem no? that, that's the problem no so uh when that we will discuss uh, you know uh, offline 
this you know not a part of this i think it's uh, five years army uh, that's, okay. that's, that's okay that's okay we can take that off right? okay. okay now uh coming back here the only thing which is left for today's discussion is this non-database file now we discuss about the database file the database and everything now uh the non-database file what are file you use okay what do you mean by that when i, when I say non-database files non-database files means other file which you are what like uh, if there is any um, PHP project and PHP files if there is any uh, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, Angular code over there from time. So, no, no, no. I'm, not, I'm not talking about the code files. I'm not talking about the code files. Uh, Javed? Haru? No. I'm not sure. What? No, no, no. I'm not sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. See, uh, non think again. Uh, you know, you have worked on a lot of things. What all file you use in your project, which are not in database? I'll give an example. The uploads, log file. You're using that, right? Yes. Uh, some configuration files in the project, which is not a part of the code. Environment file, yes. Right. So you want to mention everything about that. Okay. Uh, the other files in the database, uh, like uh, the fields in the database, the data, but uh, the other data which is stored in the file system elsewhere. Okay, for example, your uh, uploads, uh, your log files, right? Just let, let's understand, we'll discuss that in the debugging section. Uh, in the debugging section, guys, uh, I encourage all of you to uh, attend and we're going to actually deep dive into that, okay? Uh, today and yesterday, we discussed at a, at a very surface level, we just scratch the surface, right? In the debugging level, we're going to deep dive, right? And all these things we, we need in the uh, debugging section. So, People should, uh, just look at the document, they should know, okay, this is how they want to debug. Okay, the other log files we have. Okay, if I uh, have this particular uh, issue, okay, I have to find this log file. If uh, the upload is not happening, I have to uh, check the permission of this particular folder where the uploads are happening. It's the point. So you want to mention all these things in the direction. So that is going to be easier while debugging as well. So for that, I think naming convention is important for method as well. Yeah. Obviously. So, see, uh, like uh, I said yesterday as well in the coding practice session, uh, I'm not going into detail like what exactly you need to do. Right? So, naming convention, yes, this is required. And uh, this is part of the course that we discussed yesterday in the coding uh, practice session. Yes, yes. Right? Cool, then. I think I'm done from my end. If you guys have any queries, you can uh, shoot at me. We have still uh, some time. We can discuss that. Or else we can wind up a few. Okay. So, uh, can we get that technical document uh, for this to happen? Yeah, I say the both the document with you, the mm -hmm. architecture, well, the HLD and MLD both the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll share that uh, in a group. I don't have anything. Uh, it just, yeah, I, I'll share that with you. Hmm? Anything else? Hmm. No? Okay, so uh, I, I'll just give you a hint uh, about it. Uh, okay. That, that's okay. Uh, you'll get the assistant, uh, the assignment for uh, both the session by uh, EOD or tomorrow. Uh, Priya will get in touch. Uh, Priya will uh, make you about the uh, assistant. Too. And you have two weeks to do that. Okay, so you have enough time to do that. So don't worry, but uh, yeah. And based on that, they will be scoring. Okay, okay. cool then. Uh, I think I'm done. So and I don't think we have any question, which is a bit scary, but uh, I understand. You guys have already, you know, most of you know most of the things. So that's okay. Not because that. Cool then. All the best. And yep. uh, I'll see you in the next session in the debugging thing. And we're going to deep dive. Okay. Deep dive. Deep dive. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.